I have another video that kind of unpacks the basics of inverse functions, but we didn't really have time to go into a lot of the little uh, nuanced details of inverse functions. So in this video, we're going to tackle just the little side topic of graphically interpreting inverse functions. And I have two, two main goals in this video. Uh, one, I want to figure out when does a function have an inverse? Like how, how can I look at a, a function's graph and specifically and see whether this function does or does not have an inverse. And then number two, if this graph does represent an invertible function, how do we draw the inverse? So a very big emphasis on graphing and drawing and not really a whole lot of the algebra behind uh, inverse functions here in this video. Okay, so let's start with question number one. When does a function have an inverse? Well, to answer this question, we actually have to take a step back. Uh, I hope we all remember from our algebra class days um, uh, something called the vertical line test. Let me remind you what it said. This test helped us determine when a graph represented just a function, not, not an invertible function or any, anything like that. And it said that if you can pass a vertical line, imagine taking this vertical line here and moving it from left to right across this graph right here. Uh, at any given time, as long as it only touches the graph at at most one point, then it represents a function. But if we ever had a situation where it crossed a vertical line and then crossed it again or, or again and again and crossed it more than one time, and that would not represent a function. So looking at this graph, hopefully we would all say that yes, this does represent a function. So the vertical line test is very helpful for that. But it doesn't really address being a function with an inverse. Well, for that, let's think about what happens with an inverse. Well, basically, the point x, y becomes the point y, x. I'll give you an example. 3 squared is 9. So 3, you plug in a 3, you get out a 9. But the inverse function for the positive x's would be the square root function, where 9 would come back to 3. So you get the point that switched 9, comma 3. So he, here's, here's the underlying thing that's going on with the vertical line test, and we'll tie this in with inverse functions. Every x, you want to only have one y value. But for inverse functions, we also want to keep an eye out on the y values, the y values, and make sure that they only correspond to one x value. So it's a, a little more difficult here. So here we go. A graph represents an invertible function, a function that actually does have an inverse, if it passes not only the vertical line test that we know very well, this makes sure that it's just a, a plain Jane vanilla function, but also passes the horizontal line test. Now, what's that for? Well, it's looking in anticipation to see if the inverse relationship, if you swapped the X's and the Y's, is looking ahead to see if that will be a function in the future. Right, because if you look at this example up here, do you see how, yes, 1x goes with 1y, passes the vertical line test, but if you choose 1y, it doesn't correspond to 1x. So the problem is not now, the problem is in the future. So that if you took this guy's inverse relationship, swapping the x's and the y's, your new x would not correspond to 1y, but 3y's. I'll make up some quick uh, numbers to help you understand this. Let's say this X is two and this Y is uh, seven and these other X's are negative one and five. Okay, so currently this is fine. Negative one can go to seven and two can go to seven and five can go to seven. That's totally fine and it'd be a function. But what would happen with the inverse relationship? Then you would have the point seven negative one and seven two and seven five after you swap them and that's a no-no so uh, it has to pass both the vertical line test and the horizontal line test and again the horizontal line test was to make sure that it was invertible an invertible function all right uh now we actually have a name if your uh graph does in fact 
pass both vertical line test and the horizontal line test. Uh, a common phrase that's used is called one to one. It's a great word because it represents one X being associated with only one Y and vice versa. So one to one is a great name for a function that passes both of these tests. Um, you also hear this word a lot called monotonic, monotonic. When you hear the, the word mono or the phrase or the prefix mono, you think one, right? Which is certainly true. Monotonic means your function is doing one thing, namely either going up or just going down. And here, here's why it works. If your function is monotonic, just increasing, it's going to be one to one. It's going to pass both the vertical line test and the horizontal line test. But if your function goes up and then turns around, do you see how you're going to fail the horizontal line test if it changes from increasing to decreasing? So functions that um, go up and down uh, are not going to be invertible functions. So those are two vocabulary words we should commit to memory. So let's check out these two examples here. Are these invertible or not invertible? Let's start with this one here. What do you think? Is this graph... Uh, an invertible function, does he have an inverse? I would say no. Why? Because looking at a given y value, I see that it would fail the horizontal line test. We have a horizontal line that crosses at more than one point, and that's not allowed. But here, looking at this graph, this one looks pretty good because every one x goes with only one y. If you pass a vertical line through it, it only crosses at one point. You pass a horizontal line through it, it crosses at only one point. Uh, so I would say that uh, this guy here does not have an inverse, but this guy here does have an inverse. Right now, that's all well and good, but now how do you actually find it? You know, so you know we can get rid of this guy. But this guy we have to examine a little closer. I know he has an inverse, but I don't know who he is. I don't, I don't know what this f of x is. I just sketched a random graph down. Can we graph the inverse of a, a, some function without actually knowing who he is? And uh, fortunately, the answer is yes. So here, here's the idea. If this is your relationship, and we know that f of a gives you b, in other words, it goes through the point a, b, then on the inverse graph, it, it's going to go through the point BA. And so uh, let's look at some examples here. If, um, if here's the point A comma B, then where is B comma A? Well, it looks like B is a little larger and A is a little smaller and so on and so forth. You can continue this pattern and it looks like everybody over here is going to hop over here. And you can see that happening with all these points here. All these points that are on one side are hopping to the other side. Well, the short of it is this. The inverse function is going to be a reflection of f of x across the line y equals x. Now, who is this? This is that 45 degree line with a slope of 1. So let me come back up here for a minute and uh, let me erase all this here. If I graph y equals x, <clears throat> which I'll, I'll do real quickly here. It's this 45 degree line right here. You can see that was precisely what was happening. Points on this side of the line were hopping to this side of the line. One five was jumping to five comma one, for example. Okay. Now my, my graphing skills on here are pretty poor, but hopefully I, I'll do a good enough job to give you an idea of uh, what the inverse relationship would look like. Okay, now that's not the best graph in the world, but you get the idea. If this is f, this would be the graph of f inverse, because in effect you're taking x, y, and plotting y, x. Now what would happen to any point that goes through this line y equals x right here? Well, it would actually be like a pivot point, if you will. The point 4, 4 would stay 4, 4. I mean, that that's certainly true. Um, so you could you would think of these as like pivot points so you're reflecting it across that 45 degree line common mistake just fair warning i see this mistake all the time from students on test um i'll ask them to graph an inverse relationship um given a, a graph of a function and i can't tell you how many will try to graph something like this but what what's wrong with that that's not reflected across y equals x that's reflected across the y-axis 
or oftentimes we'll see it reflected, you know, in a similar way, you know, across the X axis, which will also be incorrect. So make sure and don't do either one of those. It's the 45 degree line y equals x and only this way not even the reverse of that not negative x but just y equals x so just remember that